We take a cat nap and then do uh, a couple hours of uh, live rolling. Man, we got sofas out there, man. Hey, yeah. a little bit, you know. Let's see. I might just might just go straight into rolling and then nap later. Yeah. But I'm. Yeah. Don't don't take a nap while you're rolling. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, unless they put you to sleep. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. But man, uh, as far as uh, where are you gonna be rolling at? Um, go back to uh, over there to Ohana headquarters on San Pedro. Nice. Uh, yeah, those guys are savages, so they're gonna give it to me. I'm probably gonna lose about five to seven pounds. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> easily. Man, uh, especially this humidity. I mean, I know uh, you're from San Antonio. Yes. Okay, yeah. So of course we all know. I mean, you've been here mm -hmm. in Texas, but of course, but um, humidity, man, freaking shit sucks, dude. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm from here, and I tell people I don't mind the heat. I mean, I'm like dark as hell just from being out, but um, it's humidity is what gets me. You know, gets me. I'm. Yeah, I get tired of it, of course, I gotta go out there and uh, put up with it and, you know, do like everybody else, man, but yeah, it's just, it's been too damn hot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind the humidity, like when we were in Vegas, it's like the dry heat, I feel like I'm cooking. Like here, yeah. I'm just kind of like, oh, it's okay. You get some flavor to this cook out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some sizzle. Yeah. No, man. Well, yeah, bro, I mean, so, uh, basically, I mean, of course, we're here, we're back, you know, in the studio, uh, you know, appreciate you guys stopping by, of course. And um, what we're gonna do is uh, just talk about everything that's coming up. You know, I know you got news. I mean, we're gonna plug in your your uh, your business, your we'll location, definitely. It. Yeah. And um, the least we can do, man. I know there's there's a, a lot going on. Um, fight wise, I mean, there's been a lot of good promotions popping up. I mean, last night there was one out there in Victoria. I couldn't make it, but um, but yeah, man. I mean, of course. I mean, being, being from here in San Antonio, I mean, uh, as far as your school, your academy, it's a uh, traditional martial arts. Yes, traditional, and we also do sports, so Olympic style. Um, we also nice. practice uh, hapkido and gumdo. So uh, we do the point sparring as well. So like Olympic style is where it's like uh, continuous. Yeah. But uh, the uh, rack up the points and you keep on fighting. All the kicks are above the waist and uh, no punches to the head. So some people might be like, oh, you know, that's not. That's not ideal because you're not really trained to fight, but it's a sport, you right? Know, so no, no, definitely, man. And of course, I mean, as of right now, we've been live. I mean, this is the uh, the Fight Car Podcast. Uh, introduce yourself, gentlemen. Of course, Robert Taylor. Who who did you bring with with us today, man? Robert Taylor. I brought my um, master Taekwondo, master W here uh, from Two One O Taekwondo. Yes, out of Poteet. <laughs> Yes, so we're, well, we're actually on uh, Poteet, Jordanton. So I'm I'm from San Antonio. I actually grew up on the. Uh, northwest side between uh, you know on one end of Leon Valley to oh, all the way okay. to Holotus, so oh yeah. now you stayed on that side of town yes yeah, <laughs> nice. pretty much pretty much but uh, now I live down uh, over by South Sand High School so oh smart but, man yeah. you don't have to drive far yeah no no, no definitely <laughs> man I mean I, I know I mean just right off the bat I mean uh, I, I drive around I'm a contract delivery driver so I'm driving everywhere and gas did go down but um. Man, I bought a loaf of bread yesterday, and it was like five dollars, bro. What? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what gives, but I was yeah. like, damn. Like it's just, I mean, everything else has still gone up. Um, but I mean, of course, I mean, here in San Antonio, man. I mean, being a, a traditional martial artist, I mean, uh, how long did you uh, have you been training? So for about twenty-two years. Yeah. Wow. So I started when I was in middle school. I was thirteen uh, in eighth grade, and uh, just uh, got started a little late. Some people would say, but I'm thirty-five now, and. Maybe took like a four or five year break. I nice. uh, tried karate for a little bit because I'd moved to South Carolina, but I wanted to work and make money, so I just stopped doing martial arts. And then I was about to become a manager of uh, Jersey Mike's subs. Shout out Jersey Mike's. Yeah, you <laughs> Jersey Mike's. Uh, and then I was like, what am I doing? So I quit and moved back to San Antonio and just started training Taekwondo again and Helping out the family that got me started and eventually got to a point where I could open my own school. So Nice, bro. Well, you see, and, and those, I mean, I am self-employed. I've been self-employed for seven years. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I mean, it was scary as hell because I was like, damn, okay, this is for real. Like, I, I yeah. got to make it happen. <laughs> and I believed in myself. I mean, of course, I'm sure you did as well. I mean, yeah. once you got that opportunity, man, you jumped on it and, and you're still at it. So that's freaking great, man. Yes, so I've been at it for since uh, April of last year. So it hasn't been that long but right. we're we already made it past the one year mark and i'm like all right we're, we're doing it you know? no no definitely and the fact that you enjoy it i mean that's yeah. even better because you know there's this quote and i always say it man it's you know you, you love what you do you'll never work a day in your life so we're, we're doing it I, I enjoy what i do i ain't gonna lie we, i get my my usual customers that you know give me mm -hmm. give me a little headache but <laughs> at the end of the day man I, I keep going and you know wake up the next day to new headaches yeah. <laughs> absolutely but man i mean of course robert taylor man you how, how long have you been training training with the, the gentleman 
Uh, we've been working together for, I would say, six so, months now. As soon as you got back from Alaska, so, man, yeah. we started like running together. Started I started rolling with him. I like I like to train jujitsu. I haven't like taken any uh, formal classes or anything, right. but I'll drop the mat fee and just roll with some people. So nice. Uh, actually, uh, another friend of ours, a uh, uh, coach, one of the coaches from uh, Jesse Lay Hot Boxing, he introduced me to Robert, um, and he told me about him. He's like, "Yeah, dude, this guy fights for the military in MMA and trains killers." And he's like, "You're gonna love this guy." So, as soon as he Sweet. got here, I was like, "I think we had ran together one time." That first night, I got into town. Yeah. Yes. And then <laughs> I you think started was, doing stairs. I was like, oh, my yeah. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We had to go hard right away. I was we like, did. all right, we're doing stairs. So, yeah, where, where did you guys go, man? I love stairs, bro. I hate yeah. them, but I love them. Uh, over there by, uh, uh, what's it? Don't make me lie to you. I don't. Uh, know. <laughs> San, San Pedro and four ten over by that uh, Alamo Draft House, like over on the yeah uh, on the far side near. Uh, Long, uh, Longhorn Steakhouse, I think. Uh, there it used to be a Sears or something there's, like that. There's stairs back there. Yes. I, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I'm always by there, man. So yeah, there's yeah. stairs back there. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we used to run up and down the backside of, uh, of Alamo Draft House. And uh, I think we, me and my friends did that for like a year and a half. And then nice. eventually somebody was like, Oh, you guys can't do this. And we're like, what? what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Some people were complaining in the parking lot. I guess they got some people were doing like parkour or something. They're like, they're like yeah, hey, these guys out here jumping. jumping. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? yeah. Yeah. So they're like, well, you can't do it here, but we don't, we don't guard that other other parking lot. Ah, that's and, cool. Uh, like, there's some stairs over there. I'm like, all right, cool. So that was where we ended up going. Man, I used to run uh, downtown and. Um, Right there by the Hemisphere Park, those stairs going up into the uh, the convention and yeah. stuff, man. And damn, I mean, I hated them, bro. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, damn, okay, mm -hmm. you know. If I ever have to go up those uh, stairways to heaven, man, oh, yeah. I know I'll make it, bro. I know I'll make it. I like going over there, training myself. Yeah. Uh, just like that downtown area, even running over by uh, or up and up through. Uh, the Alamo Dome, that whole yes, area, filling those vibes. Is that t that downtown feel, the San Antonio energy, the yeah. vibes, you know. Uh, it, it just it just feels good, almost like a like a rocky feel to it. Oh really. yeah, like just, definitely. Just man. maneuvering up and down through your through your your city, through your you know through the neighborhood, through your neighborhood. You know, just people, random people, they're, and they're that's your, one thing. But they're your random people. No, you definitely, know? man. You see, I will say this, though, Matt, because even I mean, I grew up here, so the '90s, you know, going to the uh, Riverwalk and and running into other people. Just um, back then, I you know, I used to listen to punk rock, so we run into other punk yeah. rockers. And hey, where are you from? From all over the city, man, because yeah. of the bases, you know. So military life was, you know, still here. But um, I, I liked it because of that, because you would run into people from all over the world. And I'm like, damn, dude, or like yeah. band members that we run into, like, uh, I mean, of course, the Spurs, and you get uh, their yeah. opponents coming through here, man. We'd run into, like, other players, and it was just cool, man. I liked Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, and people uh, move here or get stationed here, and then they retire here and like, I don't stay. You know? Yeah. And so, very diverse family, no, military absolutely. city, so I uh, really love it. So. Yeah, man. And let me ask you, I mean, as far as uh, today, it's rest day? No, no stairs today? Uh, yeah, I feel, now that you bring it up, <laughs> I feel like I should run some stairs. But, uh, <laughs> I feel like he should run some stairs. <laughs> you, know, you can coach him more later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, after this, I'll be doing some live rolling and get about two hours in and then some rest and... Yeah, and, and, and of course, I mean, you have this fight coming up, man. This is going to be for the uh, melee fighting championship in Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, how's everything going, man? Uh, everything's going great. Honestly, my body's responding well. Getting plenty of sleep. Uh, weight's on point. You know, got my my diet under control. Really feeling. You know, it's. I don't feel drained at all. Energy levels very high. Um, like I, when I said a minute ago, I go into. Uh, some live rolling for about two hours and I'll lose uh, five to seven pounds and I'm being literal on that, you know, it's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this, guy, this guy sweats hard. Like, I, I'm oh, dripping yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. This, this shirt was dry when I came in, I promise. <laughs> like, I, I will tell you um, also, man, because um, I'm out there, I mean, delivering furniture and I have AC in my trucks, but I, I don't like to turn them on. So when I'm out there and I'm melting and I'm like, yeah. damn, dude, like, <clears> it's just, you know, it, it's crazy, but, um, you know, hey, yeah, save, save gas and get some extra power for, you know, going up the hills. Yeah, <laughs> oh, for sure, man. And I know uh, there's a, I mean, here's San Antonio, man. It's, it's, I mean, I grew up here, like I mentioned earlier, and of course, I mean, there's been a lot of changes. I mean, the city's growing. Um, out there in the south side, I haven't been out there to Petit area, or Petit Road, mm -hmm. uh, in a minute, but how's everything out there, man? Is it growing? Uh, 
it looks like it's doing good. I wouldn't say it's uh, growing a whole lot right now, but uh, there's potential. I mean, since I've been living in San Antonio when I was younger, I've seen the South Side like yeah. uh, building up a lot, and so uh, I think down there, a little closer, as you get in towards 410, I think uh, it's not too big. So I, I like it. Kind of there's a lot of neighborhoods, not no, a whole no. lot of not a lot of whole lot of uh, other stuff going on. So no, that's kinda true. Like it that way. So it hasn't changed because I, I, the last time I went out there, I mean, of course, I mean houses. I mean, you pass 410, you got ranch houses out there, and it's just. Uh, a lot of uh, residential, like you said. I mean, of course. So, I mean, heck, man. Hopefully, after this, you know, we'll get some. After this, out. get that spider rub. Yeah. There, there you bump. go. There you go. <laughs> but uh, as far as uh, your martial arts academy, man. I mean, how when when you first started, especially out there in the, in the south side, how, how did it go? Was it like a uh, actually? Uh, so, when I, I got the opportunity to open my own school, uh, I was uh, working with the National Guard on uh, on the uh, like as a food bank. Uh, volunteer for the COVID stuff that was going right. on and uh, a friend of mine a uh, close friend uh, he had a school and uh, I would train with him a lot when I was uh, competing and then he uh, was going through some personal stuff and he was like hey man my school I, I can't I can't do it anymore he's like can you take it over so so uh, it was a good transition because uh, we're we're close and uh, I've known his students for a while so uh, you hear about uh, a school transferring masters yeah. and uh, like lose everybody and everybody is kind of upset and there's a lot of hearts broken right right so but you know that didn't that didn't really happen nice. with us so it was a really smooth transition it was a, an example of how it should be done if, if no one definitely taken not. I mean, especially I mean because yeah like you said I mean if the master you know they, whether they move yeah. or they just stop or they mm -hmm. just but yeah I mean the fact that you know you, you were able to step in and yes. keep it going man, that's awesome so yep, I got a, I kind of got a head start when I started. So I feel very lucky. No, you know. no, definitely. It's uh, it's gonna be if I open up another school, it's gonna be a lot, uh, a very different, you know. Yeah, no, no, so. I, I can only imagine, man. And the, uh, the facility, I mean, what's the uh, space? Uh, I think it's twelve hundred square feet. Not, okay. not very big. Uh, most of that, I think, is like half school, half like little lobby area. Right. You know, we, I can't have like inside seating except for testing and stuff like that. So. And then I have uh, like a back area with uh, storage and bathroom, and so uh, what actually is like twenty five. The training area is like twenty five by seventy feet or something like that. So oh, okay, okay. it's not a not huge, but uh, we can accommodate. And, no, definitely, yeah. man. And I mean, how many uh, your schedule? I mean, you have them from morning to noon or uh, till evening. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, five thirty to eight thirty is our schedule. Uh, okay. I'm thinking about like maybe adding another class. Not sure if nine thirty would be too late for some people, but uh, it, it would be worth it to add another class and get some more uh, training in for for some of my uh, more experienced now. They're more experienced no, uh, yeah. competitors that need a little more advanced training. No, so. for sure. You see, and, and that's another thing, too, because a lot of gyms, I mean, they, it's like here, like, you know, they, they, they're out till 9 o'clock or whatever, mm -hmm. people are here till like 10, 30, 11, you know, no, nobody wants to go home, man, so, yeah. I mean, that would actually work yeah. out if you were able to, you know, add mm -hmm. another uh, class to it, man. Yeah. So, other than that, uh, it's uh, Monday through Thursday and on Saturdays uh, from 5.30 to 8.30. We do two classes for free. We got a lot of kids, but now I'm getting a lot of adults involved as nice. well, so... Uh, my teenager and adult class is really uh, building up, and uh, I have a strength and conditioning class that I offer to my teens and adults for free because I know traditional martial arts doesn't always give you a really hard workout, and that's what you know a lot nice. of teenagers need, a lot of adults are looking for uh, outside of just the traditional training. So, no, for sure, yeah. man. I mean, just like you mentioned earlier, stairs. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I mean, I'm sure if you had them over there. You'd ah, use yes, them too, right? yeah. <laughs> them. In my ideal, in, in my <laughs> mind, I'm like. And if I could build my own school, there would be right. a set of stairs in the back. <laughs> they don't go. They don't go anywhere. You just have to go up them, back down no, them. No, definitely, man. And that's one of the things because um, I've been doing a lot of road, road work, uh, running. You know, mm -hmm. doing um, out there by this park by my house. And there's a creek, so they've got these these uh, concrete pavements going mm -hmm. down. And so I sprint them. I do bear cross. Oh. I do like all sorts. You know, side to mm -hmm. sides. It's just. I mean, I, I kill myself and I regret it. You know, because two days later I'm still hurting. But um, I noticed that at the Leha gym. They're using that oh. uh, parking lot, man. Yeah. I saw it, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. like I'm like, hey, yeah. okay, I'm not the only one, you know. And so yeah. that's pretty cool. But getting that training outside in the Absolutely. humidity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys uh, both still go to Lega? 
I I have I only go there to kind of like to hang out. You know, I don't have a lot of time to just right, hang right. out and do stuff. So if I've got time, I'm going to see uh, Jeremiah or Robert. And, you know, uh, uh, it's it's a really nice facility. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't been out there, man. I, I definitely. Oh, I, know yeah, I saw it the other day, and I, when I saw that video they were doing, and I said, uh, hey, I gotta go by there, man. Mm-hmm. Definitely. They just started, uh, or I guess this week, they're uh, uh, throwing in a couple yoga classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so that's where I'm going to be. Oh, sweet. Oh, man. Goodness. Yeah. Pretty sore, pretty tight, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's something I've been wanting to get into for a while, so on top of uh, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo, and boxing, I'm throwing some yoga. A little around. stretch. Oh, man. absolutely. It's, there's plenty of days yeah. where, you, where I could spend a whole hour stretching, and it's not enough. I'm like, can we just spend another hour stretching? And this, uh, you know, and I know there's other things into it, but it's something that I've uh, actually feel my body screaming for is uh, yoga and a lot of breathing techniques and um, just really um, just calming things down. Because sometimes, you know, just as much as I want to get ramped up and go, go, oh, go, yeah. you know, you got to control that. And I want to, you know, work, work toward... Um, just having that control all the time, being able yeah. to use it whenever uh, he knows. Uh, you yeah. know, he's seen me. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get there. I'm just like, you just he wake, gotta... wakes up in the morning, like, you know, with the battle cry. That's that's how he wakes up. You know, so. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, um, well, I will say this though, because stretching is freaking a great thing to do, and I mean, all of us should do it, regardless of whether we train or not, because. I mean, I, like, you, like you just mentioned, I wake up in the mornings and I'm stiff, man, like my back, and I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. you know, but even stretching, like I'll, I'll sit there, I'll go to the back and I'll start stretching and just concentrating on the stretch about breathing mm-hmm. is, you know, that Relax. alone kills me, man. Yeah, relaxing into the stretch. Yeah, it's just, everybody's like, oh, man, it's yoga or whatever, but bro, you, you try it and see yeah. if you can last a few minutes. Yeah, yeah I, I talk to my students, you know, we stretch and, and uh, they're all trying to get the splits and some of them are like, oh, man, I can't and it hurts and, you know, and I'm like, and I describe it as like you have to stretch, you have to relax and breathe into your stretch, just like yeah. when you wake up in the morning and you stretch, and it feels good, right? And yeah. they're like, yeah. So we're stretching. They're trying to get the splits, and then like, you know, you guys gotta yell, it feels good, and they're like, it feels good, and they're like, ah. <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> hey, but man, that's where it starts sometimes, right there. Tell yourself it feels good. You can tell yourself that it feels bad, it sucks, it's painful, and you're gonna that believe it. Block. You're yeah. gonna believe it, and it's going to. You're gonna feel that pain, mm-hmm. or you can snap out of it and like, you know what? This isn't so bad. It's gonna get better. Oh. This is this is for me to get better. You know, it's to benefit me. And after a while, that starts to turn into just yeah. more positive. Um, you know, maybe more pleasure. You know, instead yeah, of no, you know, such pain. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, you'd be surprised at how many times. I mean, we we uh. We end things just mentally because we're like, oh, I can't do that, and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't like, oh man, maybe let's try it. But that, that's a good way to think and go about it, man. Yes. Because definitely, if you want to accomplish something, the first thing to do is got you got to convince yourself, right? Yes. Absolutely. And if you uh, focus on what you can't do, you're oh, going to yeah. lose focus of what you want to do. So. Exactly, man. No, no, definitely. Now, let me ask you, as far as uh, your classes, I mean, this is take um, taekwondo. Yes, taekwondo. Uh, it's a uh, world taekwondo. So we do uh, traditional. It's uh, Cheng Mu Kwan, which is like one of the nine Kwans of Taekwondo when it first, you know, all came together under the name of Taekwondo. Uh, so we do Taegu uh, patterns and uh, so compete with AAU. Uh, AAU does uh, multiple styles of Taekwondo, so that's why we also do point sparring as well, which is yeah. more like the Karate Kid type of sparring. Right. Um, and they have a lot of really awesome events as well, like board breaking and demonstration and well, weapons okay. and things like that. Uh, I really enjoy all the aesthetics of of martial arts. Uh, so, okay. but uh, I think the, the the traditional part of it, you know, that's the foundation. That's where everything is inspired from. Is from the tradition. And uh, in Taekwondo, we also focus on the culture from Korea. Um, so the uh, a lot of my students and in this is like from the school that I grew up in. You know, we learn about. You know the culture, yeah. just like we learned about the American flag. You know we learned about the the oh, Taegukgi, yeah. the the South Korean flag as well, and learn about the symbols and all the yeah. meanings and everything like that. Which a lot of people don't know. You know, like the uh, the middle of the uh, South Korean flag, it has the red and the blue. The it's called Um and Yang, and uh, it's actually that's the Taeguk, which uh, in came from you know a lot of the Chinese culture that uh, that Korea shared with them, um, and. Uh, the uh, Taeguk in Chinese is Tai Chi, 
And a lot of people oh, think that it. Tai Chi is, you know, a martial art, but Tai Chi means the supreme ultimate. And okay. uh, the martial art of Tai Chi is called Tai Chi Chang, which means supreme ultimate fist. But, uh, nice. you know, if you think of like the uh, the yin-yang symbol, that's what everybody calls it, the yin-yang. Yeah. But it's actually the, the Tai Chi, so... It's kind of it's it's really awesome to be inspired by you know other cultures and yeah, to be able to like look yeah. deeply into an art that you know what the martial arts has has so many like cultural cultural symbolisms in them you know what I mean um, other styles of martial arts they have all their uh, patterns are named after historical events or historical people so nice. a lot of martial arts are very. Uh, you know, they, they want to express their culture and their, their people, you know what I mean? No, so. yeah, by all means, bro. I mean, that's actually, man, thank you for that. You see that? Yeah. I didn't even know. Now you know. Yeah, yeah, that you was know. good. In my head, I'm like, oh, school. <laughs> <laughs> man, but I will say this because, I mean, growing up, um, of course, I used to watch uh, Kung Fu Theater. You know, mm -hmm. come, come the weekend, I mean, I'd be, I'd be out there with Pops. And, of course, you know, made for TV, man. But, I mean, I remember being a kid and, and thinking, man, I want to learn this. I want to I jump off a, a tree and fly and go through the wind, right? But, um, I mean, when it comes to traditional martial arts, of course, man, I mean, there's there's a lot of it. I mean, uh, coming from culture, I mean, like yourself, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure now now I know that you studied this and yeah. you actually know. And, and that's great, man, because, I mean, you can't forget that. No, you know? no, I mean, no, no. For, for you to be able to pass that hope forward and, and teach your students. Man, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be inspired to do it if it didn't yeah. have that. So, you know. It's, that's cool, uh, man, definitely. So let me ask you, um, when he first came into your class and when you started training with him, man, mm -hmm. what, what did you think about this guy, man? I want to fight him. <laughs> that is, you know, uh, like, you know, most of the time when I see him, I kind of like square up because I want to see it. Like, you want to go right now? No. <laughs> I have to be like, no, I let, stop it. You know, I love, you I know, I, coming up, man. Come on. yeah, I love, you know, having that uh, camaraderie to yeah. be able to like go and not be, you know, worried about, you know, if I hurt you a little bit, you know, you're not going to be mad or anything like that. Right. And I know you're going to take care of me as well, you know. You're not going to try yeah. to hurt me too badly or anything, you know. And if there's an accident, you know, uh, which uh, the uh, coach from uh, uh, Leia Boxing, he was like, I'm not allowed to, like, spar, like, throw hands because I'll accidentally, I always go with, like, the overhand, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I go with the overhand and I accidentally get people in the nose all the time and I'm like, yeah, I probably just shouldn't do that. Yeah, no <laughs> I shouldn't shots. play around like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. man, I mean, the guy's a mixed martial artist, man, he can take it, right? Take yes, hits. absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, uh, that was the first thing I thought when uh, I was hearing about him. I'm like, oh, yeah, good. I can't wait right. to meet him and see what he's got, you know. Yeah, so, man, definitely. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we always want to challenge, right? Yeah. And like, oh, man. That's good, though, man. Yeah. You see, because and I was just talking to somebody earlier. I mean, when it comes to, to learning, I mean, you, you want to go with people better than you or people different yes. than you because there's, you know, there's always something out there that they're not used to being thrown mm -hmm. at. Or, you know what I mean? Like something... But, uh, but that's good, though, man. I like that. Yeah. So, and then uh, stairs, he was all right. <laughs> so, and you got to carry him up? He, you know, no. Last, last no. Rep. <laughs> he, got, he got it. He did all, he did all of them. So. Like, like how, how many steps would you say? Uh, I think it's 36 steps on the way up, 36 steps on the way down. You're not allowed yeah. to. That don't even sound like nothing. It, it, it doesn't. That, no, okay. that, uh, that number I, does no I justice to these I, stairs. I, I, <laughs> you just seen that number. I'm like, yeah, I, I already felt that on my yeah. knee. Oh, oh, you're not me. allowed to skip any. You know, we have specific <laughs> workouts on the stairs that we do. So uh, it helps with a lot of footwork, but it helps with that uh, explosiveness, moving forward and up, nice, you know. Bro. Uh, so sometimes we do. We have to, like, sprint up them, and you're skipping, you know, three or four steps at a time and then like just mix it up launch at the top yes yeah, yeah. Bro, warm dude, up I, I love that yeah. i just went up 20 degrees just thinking about it man well you, you see and um what i started doing with mine is i actually i'll, I'll take water with me so I'll, I'll take a big gulp and i'll hold it in my mouth while i run just to make sure I'm, i keep breathing through my nose just to get that heart rate up man and mm -hmm. yeah bro that stuff kills you man i mean i don't i wouldn't you know that thing's pretty steep but i do raps I yeah. do, uh, there's like four sections, so I do five reps of, you know, mm -hmm. side to side, uh, sprints, I'll do uh, uh, bear crawls, I mean, just... Yeah, you know, I love the greenways around here. Like, yeah. when they started putting those in, I was like, man, San Antonio's yeah. got it going on now, yeah. No, you so. see, and I, I love that, man, because one of the things, I mean, I deliver out there by Stone Oak, and I, I go to some crazy residential places, and I see all these trees and all this greenery, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, man, if I was a kid out here, man, I'd be having a time oh, yeah. of my life, bro. Like, it's just... 
to go out there and run and jump and you know just all sorts of stuff man yeah, yeah. i've been lucky enough to like buy all the houses i grew up in it was like right next to the woods so nice. uh, that's where you know we'd be hanging out <laughs> trying to see how many trees we can get you know oh yeah like sure, uh much. climb up one tree and then go to the next tree you know yeah uh, a little no. dangerous but <laughs> no no for sure man. Yeah, was, and of course i mean you grew up here in san antonio right you said? yes and uh growing up i mean was it the uh, leon valley uh, yes, over by, uh, I went to Sol Ross Middle School. Wow, oh, okay. uh, I was in, like, around Bronze Station. Uh, I think I went to Stevenson Middle School oh, okay, for, gotcha. like, a sixth grade, and then ended up moving over by Ingram Park Mall behind, uh, it used to be Fiesta Dodge, yes. now it's the, now it's oh, the yeah, Aquarium. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that place has blown up a lot. There's a, oh, yeah. a lot of crazy changes around there, you know. People from 10 years ago come here and be like, what happened? You right. know? Oh, yeah, that's the way I am, man. I'm yeah. going to places... I had no idea it existed, and you know they're like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna see nothing but trees, and you'll see a residential area." And I'm like mm -hmm. driving through the woods, and I'm thinking, "Man, where the hell is these houses?" And boom, out of nowhere, man, it's just yeah. big old subdivision in the middle of nowhere. But I mean, San Antonio is still growing, man. And I, I just, you know what, man? We have skate parks, we have like all these places for people to go skateboard, and I'm thinking they gotta make make something for for us adults that want to jump on trees and just you know. I mean, mm -hmm. we have parks, but come on, man, I, I want to get something out there that's like a. Uh, what, you, what was that TV Rip. show that you used to go and jump and try to gladiator uh, type stuff? Yeah, man? yeah. Glad Let's just have be. more parkour parks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, bro. That would be, I would, man, I would love that, bro. I'm not saying I do them all the Take time. Take the spider right? go. Yeah. <laughs> no, it'd be more like, there he goes. There you go. Falling, down, <laughs> falling off something. But, um, but yeah, man, you see, I love that stuff, man. But uh, but may, maybe one day I'll go with you guys to the stairs, man. Yeah, we just, absolutely. We just won't go live because I, I, <laughs> sure. I don't, I don't want to yeah, become yeah, a meme yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. You and me both. <laughs> but, man, but bro, as far as workouts, I mean, of course, martial arts, but what else do you incorporate into your training? Uh, well, actually, it's uh, very specific towards uh, Taekwondo. Uh, I Actually, uh, I mean, running is really good. Uh, long distance running is good for training because you build up those... Uh, the capillaries so that when you have to do those explosive uh training you know that that uh the fast twitch and everything yeah. like that you can get more reps in and uh, you can get more out of it if you don't have like the stamina to train for an hour or an hour and a half yeah, right. you know you have to do that uh cycling is really good because you got the knee motion that comes up and down to helps with the keep the hip flexors you know lubricated and and give keep you having a good range of motion you know, for that swimming, of course, is like not as much impact and way better for your cardio. So, uh, but really, just fo just nothing replaces kicking. So yeah. you got to kick a lot. You know, uh, taekwondo is like sprinting with your feet above your head for you know oh, three yeah. minutes. So it's uh, you you have to do that also. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and you see, you just mentioned. Like, I used to work at Academy Sports for years, and uh, people would come in and oh, I want to buy this machine. I want to spend a thousand on this, and then. They would tell me what they were doing, and I would ask them, like, man, what, what are you getting ready for? Oh, well, my, my son's in football, and, and I would always show him a medicine ball. I was like, you know what, Try to check this out, you know, let me show you something. And, and I would just tell them about, uh, you know, working different muscles for explosiveness and just, you know, plyometrics and isometrics. Mm -hmm. and, and they were like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll try it. And then they'd come back, and man, like, what else do you have? And so it would get me excited, because I'm like, man, what else do I have? You know, and I would always think about all these different drills to do, but I'm thinking, like, you don't need... A world class gym when it comes to working out, man. Yeah. You could easily, you know, have mm -hmm. stuff at home that you can, you know, yeah. to improve. Absolutely. All you need is a horse riding stance. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. I, I started. Uh, I started in high school, and it was. I'll never forget it. It was they were showing. Uh, it was WWF at the time, and it was The Rock versus uh, Brock Lesnar. They were training to fight, I believe, at uh, WrestleMania or something. Uh, and they did a whole little montage of them. They got the Rock running up and down his uh, bleachers and yeah. everything at the stadium. And uh, Brock Lesnar's got a tree on his back, and he's, you know. Uh, and then they show Brock Lesnar doing uh, push-ups, a white arm push-up. Yeah, he's got bro. three chairs, his feet on one, and his hands on the other, and he's just going. And I'm laying in bed, you know, the night before I go to school, watching this. I'm a kid, full of energy. I'm all hyped. I'm like, I, I, I want to try that. So I get out of bed. I got two chairs in here. I, I put my feet on the bed and go. And I go lay down. I'm like, chest feels all pumped. I'm like. You try that again. I go. I get back up. It's still going. I'm pumped. And like, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep that night. I remember, but I got. A, I got the greatest pump of my life, you know. So from then on, I just kept going. I was addicted, and I found that uh, the gym and the school. Uh, uh, they had you know weight um, 
weight machines and everything have bench press and all that good stuff and I'm like mm, I'm just trying this yeah. stuff out for the first time and realizing nobody goes in the weight room everybody yeah. either plays basketball or sits on the bleachers yeah and I was like, okay, so it was like I had my own little castle. It was awesome. I was just in there. I was the only person putting in any work at, you know, at that age, and it felt good. And I became like this little shrimp to this big guy, and you know, it, it was pretty cool. And the, you know, in order to get to the girls' locker room, you had to you had to go through there too. So that was that was pretty cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> after, after, after a pump, yeah. Like here you go. That was awesome. But no, it was uh, that was life changing. I just kept going on. I think that's probably what gave me the courage to. Uh, to join the military too, just yeah. getting that size on, like, look good, feel good, thinking, of, you know, look in the mirror, thinking, oh, I can do that, you know, yeah. maybe. <laughs> so. Well, you did. Yeah, and you know, didn't stop. Heck, so. You see, and, and for yourself, when, when did it start for you, man? I mean, when did martial arts, like, did uh, you see something, you see a movie maybe, or you were like, you know what? Yeah, I think uh, when I was, like, uh, in elementary school, there was a, like, watching Power Rangers, you know, oh, okay. and I think that was when I first wanted to do it. And I kind of brought it up to my parents, and they were like, "No, you, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing that. And like, you, you're gonna go around like punching, kicking people, you know." But it was kind of like yeah. something that I needed to, yeah, something that I needed to press on them, and I would have gotten started earlier. And yeah. I think they would have let me because later on, I thought I wasn't allowed to do it. And then uh, a couple of close friends of mine in middle school, they uh, they were like, "Hey, we had an intramural." Taekwondo class at uh, at our middle at our middle school at Sol Ross Middle School and uh, uh, they were like yeah come try it man you'd love it and I was like all right and I asked my parents and they were like I was already like committed to doing band you know and I'd been doing band all through middle school like the the end of elementary school to middle school and that's what I thought I wanted to do I always knew I wanted to be a teacher but I thought I thought band was going to be the thing and then uh, so I started trying the uh, Taekwondo class and uh, fell in love with it like started it. skipping band practice and <laughs> the band director marched up into the, our, our cafeteria where we were having our Taekwondo class and was like oh this is what you're going to do okay fine you're out and I was like alright I'm the second chair anyway just like that <laughs> yep it was just oh, like that man. yeah you were like well this yeah. is it this is it huh so that yeah. was it and then uh, so and, it, and then started going hard right away you know at 13 years old I was uh training every single day you know two hours a day at least and yeah, then um, during high school uh, my parents were like yeah you should do homeschooling so I started working with my uh, master to help him open little uh, clubs at like uh, you know daycares and churches yeah. and we'd go around doing that and then we'd go to the to the main school and uh, start training so it was very very old school um, training as well as not a this was before they had like electronic gear yeah which a lot of people say has ruined the yeah. sport but I, I I like it like I like when the rules change because then every, you get to see everybody's adaptability and that's really what uh, fighting is about is being able to overcome all the challenges that are in front of you you know as far as not real fighting you know right. as far as the competition goes real fighting is <clears throat> you know break contact and make sure you overmatch them <laughs> that's you know, it you, you don't have that guy yeah. in there with you trying to you know stop things to make things safer mm -hmm. you know yeah. that's not a real fight that's yeah. competition and yeah, yeah like you're true. saying i love when when the rules change and people have to change with them yeah. you know, yeah. i love to see them whine and complain and <laughs> you know, try yeah. to but you see that that's good because you don't plateau you don't get used to the same yeah. you, know, uh, you tweak yeah. it up and now you're like oh okay now yeah. all right cool yeah. Gotta do this. yeah in the world of taekwondo there you're trying to keep it interesting they're trying to make the rules in a way where the fighters are going to uh, express taekwondo as they see it you know which is uh, like a beautiful martial art where it looks like people are flying yeah. you know so that's what that's what they're trying to get out of it uh, for a while it was a little stagnant it was like uh, fencing but uh, with your leg so yeah. but right, <laughs> right now right now they've uh, they just changed the rules a little bit well a lot more they just like took the rug out from it everybody and uh, so, and those changes have made a big difference in uh, what people are seeing now. Yeah, so yeah. this coming Olympics is, is going to be a, hopefully a really awesome event. Like uh, as yeah, far yeah. as as far as Taekwondo goes, people are going to see a completely different sport than what they've been seeing for the last uh, sixteen years. So let, let me ask you this, because there, there was a I don't even know, think it's still around, but a K one. Remember, like they used to incorporate like kickboxing, taekwondo, mm -hmm. karate, and 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 just uh, muay thai, mm -hmm. you know. But they used to incorporate all these like striking combat. 
or all these uh, striking forms, should I say? Uh, what, what, what's your thoughts on something like that? Um, uh, I think like one championship is kind of doing something like yeah. that. They they have only kickboxing, they have only yeah. jiu-jitsu, and then they also have MMA. I think it's awesome, like, having more of these combat sports, I feel like it, uh, it, it really puts a lot more emphasis on the individual athlete, you know, um, and then when, uh, gyms come together and, uh, support that athlete, or they, ha you know, grow even, uh, they grow more athletes, you know, and they start getting wins like that, I think, uh, that's a lot better than, than, I, I, I like baseball, you know. I like football. I, I like playing those things, you know. But watching them is not as uh, not as fun, you know, for me. But maybe that's just me as a as a you know competitor. Like I like. Well, to. I mean, I'm the same way. But I mean, if it's live, I'll, I'll go watch it. I just mm -hmm. can't sit at home and watch baseball, or yeah. just go home and watch it. It's got to be live for yeah. me. But got that feel to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get the vibe, mm -hmm. you get the energy. You know, you talked about, it, and it's just like something like that definitely pumps me up. Like I've never been a fan of basketball. Um, Years back, of course, I was invited. They were like, yeah, let's go Spurs game. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. No problem. Yeah. I got there, and I was, I was like a fanatic. I was like, ah, going crazy. And just because everybody was going crazy, you know, and of course, of course the Spurs were winning back then, but, you know. But, um, but yeah, it was just exciting. And that's when I was just like, you know what? I can watch this stuff. It's just got, it has to be live, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, combat sports is like, you know, it's uh, it's growing and uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I think it's I think a lot of people are gonna gravitate towards that as yeah, far yeah. as like <clears throat> spectatorship and stuff like that. You know, people are gonna rally behind uh, the athletes uh, rather than the the logo on the you know the team. Oh yeah. You know, so I think that's a, a little bit more uh, a little bit more exciting. You're rooting you're rooting for one guy rather than uh, the colors that that the team is wearing. You know. No, definitely. I mean, and, and let me ask you this: as far as um, outside of martial arts, I mean, what's your go-to? I mean, you go home and watch, like, do you, do you go uh, home and watch sports? YouTube, like, yeah, you know, yeah, I was gonna uh, say me too. <laughs> everywhere, you know, uh, podcasting. You know, yeah. I like to listen to the JRE. You know, uh, Lex oh, Friedman. Who does it, you know, man? The definitely. Usual, they, you know, the popular ones, yeah. but. Uh, Hey, only the Fight Cat. Fight Card Podcast. Yeah, only, 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 only. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the only one I listen to, man. It's the only one. I don't know about you guys, but, no, but you see, there, for me, it's got to be uh, like a murder mystery. It's got to be yeah. like a true crimes type. And I'll sit there and listen to it all day, man. I'm driving and I'm like, so there's a few out there. I mean, when it comes to MMA or just even com like combat sports, I don't listen to any other ones. Not because, I mean, there's plenty of them you know, that I'm sure mm -hmm. I'd enjoy. But for me, it's more like, I mean, this is mine, so I don't want to get ideas. And just, if I come up with something and somebody's like, hey, so-and-so is doing this too, then I had no idea. I can yeah. honestly say I didn't know that, but, you know, this is what I'm doing. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm the same way, podcasts. Yeah, yeah. actually, I, uh, so I do watch some shows, like, you know, because we got streaming services oh, and yeah. everything. So if I hear the, there's a good show, I'll, like, binge a season of it and try not to, <laughs> try not to you know, marathon it. But actually, I yeah. uh, just finished, like, the first season of Ted Lasso. I haven't, I haven't even it's started on that. One. Really good. It's really good. If you, you know, if at, for coaches, you know, yeah. uh, you heard about it. Yeah, it's I like, mean, I've heard uh, about it. But yeah. I, I've, I know uh, there's a uh, two. Um, God, I can't think of them right now. But a the, the buddy of mine was telling me, and we're always like, man, what's this? We're always thinking about new shows that are coming up, or what's new, man? What, what have you yeah. seen? And he, he threw that one at me, and I was like, okay, that's yeah. it. But I haven't, I haven't it, started it. It's yet. really good from a coach's perspective. Like Ted Lasso is yeah. definitely a spirit animal to be like. You know, you gotta you gotta channel him because uh, he handles everything like a uh, like a champ, and yeah. you know he's thrown. You know, it, I know it's fictional, so. No, yeah. But, but yeah, that's, that's you know that's how the writers are like. This is the perfect coach. Yeah. A guy that doesn't know anything about the sport, and he just works with the team and makes it to where they become winners. You know? Yeah. So. Definitely. You see, and I mean, when it comes to motivation, I mean, of course, you know. Uh, Robert, man, I mean, what are who, who are some people some people that motivate you? I mean, of course, the gentleman right here, but uh, you know, when it comes to like, I mean, there's people out there, athletes, or not even combat sports related, but just in general that. No, I mean, I'm I'm dead serious. Like when I when I said uh, the Rock and oh, yeah, uh, Brock yeah, Lesnar, sure. like the Rock, you know, just been on top since forever. Yeah. Uh, and that's one you know started off with being the most electrifying man. In, uh, in sports entertainment to now all of entertainment, right? Oh, and he yeah. just stays he's on top and goes and goes and goes. Um, and yeah, that's just been one of the, the top guys that I've followed for years, um, him and recently Elon Musk and, oh, yeah. um, yeah. you know, there and, you know there's a bunch of, in, in martial arts, uh, GSP being one, 
at the top, just really following somebody who lives clean, Bernard Hopkins, um, people who live a nice, uh, healthy lifestyle, uh, healthy diet, healthy mindset, take care of their bodies, um, you know, you know, even Bernard Hop uh, Hopkins has, has like a, uh, you know, he has his past and, you know, he shows that he uh, got in, uh, you know, very late and just showed you what what could really happen if you just take care of everything, check all the boxes, uh, you know, take care of your body, get, you know, w with your diet, your sleep, your training, your mindset, just yeah. everything. Uh, really have it down. He talks about investing, you know, investing in himself, investing in his body, uh, all that, you know, and just, you know, getting that return later. And, you know, it, I, because he's checking all those boxes, I'm, it's, that takes out all that, a lot of that doubt. You're going to go in with, with doubt either way, but when you're out there, when you have your own list and you got your boxes that you set for yourself and you're out there checking all those boxes, when it's time, uh, do you have any questions? No. Why? Because you checked all the boxes. Nice. Oh yeah. So, uh, there's people like that, you know. I, George St. Pierre. I like going through. I like going back. Um, like when we talk about, oh, what do you watch? This and that. I, I, I might even overwatch uh, <laughs> martial arts stuff. Like I'll go back and watch the old prime time videos that they would have with George St. Pierre getting ready to fight ex opponent. Um, they show all the. Uh, just TLC, he's giving him and his camps giving him. You know, he's out there, he's doing different things like gymnastics yeah. out there, and they're showing like, yeah, this is what happens. You know, when you put a gymnast into other sports, oh, right? Yeah. And how well they can excel on top of you know versus coming from a, some other sport and trying to jump into martial arts. You really get that, you know, just that build that every you know how yeah. to manipulate everything from different uh angles uh different levels of strength you know it's kind of you know one of the reasons why i'm going into uh, into doing yoga and things is yeah. doing more you know more different things uh with my body and not just crash everything mm -hmm. into somebody else you know there's other things we can do uh you know, let's get more limber let's get more uh yeah you know be more flexible be less less tight shoulders all the way up here let's oh, loosen yeah. up a little let's breathe let's learn how to breathe all over again you know, we were talking about this, you know, he caught me the other day, I was watching podcasts and other things on breathing, um, I, I uh, watch and listen to a lot of uh, Wim Hof uh, and, and the Gracies, you know, there's just, just, uh, just, just, like I said, there's just more than just yeah. going oh, at, yeah. you know, fist to fist, you know, shin to shin, bone on bone, there's just so much more, there's levels to it. Uh, you know, and I'm just I'm just peeling those peel, peeling those layers back, and I'm looking for them. I'm searching, and I'm trying to take all those, and with, without also overwhelming myself. Right. You know, but uh, really doing my homework and implementing. You know, um, yeah. That's, yeah. That, 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 if we say like, what is it you're listening? What are you watching? What are you doing? That that's it. Like, what what's helping me get toward my goal? You, you, you tell, I don't I don't do a whole lot of just random TV watching everything right, yeah. more it's geared to it's mm -hmm. got to be controlled yeah, we can just go right. down the rabbit hole if you don't get it wrong when this fight's over I'll probably you know find <laughs> something to binge watch or something mm -hmm. you know what, whatever he was just talking about we'll maybe go catch that but I'm just real tuned in and tunnel vision into the goal you know Trying to give me one of these pretty <laughs> things, bring back go. to San Antonio, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll have you guys square off for that boat right now after yeah. the podcast. <laughs> hey, but and I was serious. I do watch your podcast a lot. We'll, there's plenty of times we'll, we'll just sit there and we'll just watch who you got on. I know you just had a boxer on or a boxer slash MMA fighter. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was talking about acting and things and oh, yeah, things like yeah. that. I was like, that you know, that's a little. Um, childhood fantasy too, but you know, I'd like to play that one after after fighting, just keeping my yeah, you I know. mean, yeah. Yo, look, look, look at uh, George St. Pierre, man. He's absolutely, doing movies, absolutely. He's definitely, you know. uh, I mean, he, he's still enjoying what he does. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things, uh, I was watching um, UFC 17, I think it was, Redemption, on VHS, right? <clears throat> I got VHS, uh, VCR at home. But um, I was watching the fights, and uh, Carlos Newton was always one that I always watched, man. I always liked him. I mean, I'd seen him fight in Pride, and, and I always thought he was going to go places, man. I don't know what happened to the guy, but I was watching him, and I was like, damn, dude, he was on, he was like the before George St. Pierre, you know, from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy had, like, full body control, like George St. Pierre, like you said, gymnast, dude. I mean, he was just like everything about him was in control. Like, he had the perfect balance, the perfect everything, and I was just like, man, I wish 
You know, I wish he would have kept up with that. I don't know, maybe it was his health or he just didn't want to fight anymore, but he's definitely one fighter that, that I always admired because I was like, man, he always presented himself with respect and he was all about, you know, martial art. Man. Absolutely. Just respecting and, and everything, man. So, but yeah, I mean, George St. Pierre is definitely another one. Um, yourself, man, I mean, who, who was it that you watched and even now, I mean, maybe um, motivate you? So as far as MMA goes, I already thought about, I already thought about this, like, uh, it's classy people, you know, so like Sage Northcutt. Yeah. Yeah. He's like just a stand up guy. Pretty good fighter. Maybe he's not like the most ferocious, but he sets a good example for yeah. everybody. So, uh, I was on the, uh, McGregor hype train. I like that, you know, even though he was <laughs> a trash talker, yeah, look, you know, a little mouthy, but yeah. Uh, George St. Pierre, of course, and he's another example of, you know, somebody that has class, so, uh, but, uh, there's a lot of athletes in, uh, Taekwondo that I admire, you know, uh, like you were saying, uh, who was it from 17 that you were talking about? Yeah. Uh, he, uh, not, not him, but, you know, like, what happened to him, where did he go? Yeah. You know, uh, we got to see him, though, you know what I mean? So, there's a lot of fighters out there, um, that a lot of people don't get to see, like, uh, that uh, so there's like Servit Tazgul is from uh, Turkey. He's uh, I don't think he's fighting anymore, but he would made Taekwondo really exciting. You know, he wasn't even when they changed the format for Taekwondo, they uh, he kept it exciting a lot of spins and explosiveness and just uh, raw power. Uh, very fast guy, also, he wouldn't cut weight, so he was always at the shorter one in his division, but he had the speed and the and the ability to get inside and, and do what he needed to do, you know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of a lot of athletes that uh, uh, here in Texas, uh, a lot of Taekwondo athletes here in Texas that I enjoy watching. So, uh, yeah, that's what I mean by you know combat sports. We get behind the athlete, and we yeah. have uh, an example. And when you have like the the colors of the team and things like that, right. it, it gets a little like you know it gets a little. <laughs> hard to follow you know why am i why am i following this or you know the team yeah. sucks oh, this yeah. year or you know things like that uh you know we always want to rally behind those uh, you know the star athletes in that but once they're gone you know you know like people that just follow lebron james whatever team he goes to now yeah. now everybody's cheering for that team oh, yeah. you know so yeah it's uh i would say uh there's a lot of good athletes you know that i enjoy watching so but oh. The ones that set a good example, I think, are the are the best. No, for sure, man. I mean, I'm, I'm big on that, too, because, I mean, there, there's one thing. Um, uh, you mentioned, you know, Conor McGregor, of course. I mean, he, mm -hmm. you know, he went about that the business that way to where mm -hmm. now he started making money. And he started, he got that fight with uh, Mayweather. I mean, he, he made things happen. And, I mean, there, there's a, a lot of MMA guys, for example, that fight, and they don't do this. They don't want the media. They don't want, they're just like, man, I just mm -hmm. want to fight. And I can respect that. I mean, just the fact that here in the U.S., MMA's got to be a little bit about everything, you know. So, that, I mean, the fact that they don't come out and, and want to do podcasts and do then it kind of keeps them at, at that level where people that are talking are going to be up here when it comes to to getting the bigger fights and the bigger, you know, sponsors and all that good stuff, man. But, but yeah, I mean, I can definitely respect that. You know, the guy that comes in and trains, I mean, you know, Robert, man. I mean, of course, you have this fight, and that's why I was looking it up right now. But uh, for Melee Fighting Championship, of course, it's going to be on September 3rd at the Palmer Event Center. In Austin, Texas. Now, so, tables are sold out. So tables now you got to go general out, admission. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I saw that. And I know yes. uh, uh, Meadows, I mean, he had posted, uh, there was a few more seats that he put up, and I'm pretty sure they're gone as well. Yeah. Um, one of the things he had posted about this event is that he, they're going to have, like, a tough man. They're going to start doing, like, all these different mm, Yeah. That's uh, the overall event, the yeah. bigger event. Some yeah. arm wrestling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I might, might get into that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, man. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, that rubber, you know, that would do, like, the over-the-top. You know, rock. There you rock go. Style. Hey, yeah. Yeah. No, back. definitely. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah. I mean, I'm looking. I'm hoping to make it out there, man. I mean, I, I want to go because the, the whole event, the way it's it's like a like an expo. Yes. You know, yeah. you're gonna go and you're gonna be able to watch a, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. But uh, man, I mean, for that fight coming up, I mean, we mentioned it the last time. I mean, what can people expect come fight night, man? I think uh, one round. <laughs> That's, uh, I think just one round is what people can expect, so, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be an awesome fight, though. Uh, I'm excited about yeah. it, man. I mean, definitely, I'm going to be there for the whole card, but, you know, I mean, the fact that you've been here, and I know, uh, your opponent, we've had him here before, like, a couple of months mm -hmm. back, and, I mean, great people, I mean, this is, 
No, you know, stay unbiased, and of course I respect everybody, and it's just the fact that you're going to go out there and showcase and, and put your skills out there, man. So I'm, I'm glad you answered that. Yeah. Me, <laughs> even I'm like, man, yeah, yeah I, I feel one round is all it's going to take. I, I know he's dangerous, you know, I know he's got a he's got a great double. I've seen a guy knock a guy out from a slam, you know, yeah. picked him up, spun him around, and threw him to the ground, it was over. Right, like I've I've seen him do it. I've seen him uh, you know, TKO a guy. He's got the strength. You know, he's young. He seems hungry. Um, he 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 sent out some little message to me the other day on Instagram, and it, it was cute. But it's, mm -hmm. it, this right here is all the attention you're gonna get from that guy. But um, yeah, I I kind of feel bad for Andrew Carvajal. You know, mm -hmm. September third in Austin, his ribs are mine. He's done yeah. one round. So I think you, you should have him back on though because uh, we did we, we watched that one and he didn't get it was it wasn't really about him so I think it would be no, awesome no, for sure man I know uh, a lot of his teammates have been you know coming through here man and and of course yeah that yeah. day he just you know they all just kind of jumped in which was mm -hmm. great I appreciate them for doing that but yeah I mean if, if he's listening and definitely man yeah. he wants to he, come out here we'll, we'll we, do a little Q and A yeah see. we know he's working hard you know and he stays busy and he's uh, competitive and he does a lot of uh, a lot of wrestling so you know. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good fight. Uh, uh, people are gonna get their money's worth, you know, just with that one. No, no, I, sure. I like listening to his coaches talk too. You yeah. know, they they you know, they got some real uh, some good insight on the on the scene. Like I said, I do listen to your podcast a lot. You know, I I, uh, I use it as my uh, my guide through through te the Texas MMA community yeah. or just you know martial arts community. Period. Uh, see what's going on. It's a you know, it, it's a good place to go. You know, I appreciate the Fight Card you, man. Podcast. Definitely, man. definitely. Thank, thank I appreciate you. you. Thank you. And of course, uh, anything you want to add before we wrap this up, gentlemen? Uh, I have to uh, shout out to Grandmaster Martinez. This is his birthday today. So oh, happy birthday! Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's a Korean America Taekwondo. Uh, they've been here for 37 years. Nice. Yeah, and that's how they've been. They've been doing martial arts a lot longer, but yeah. that was how I got started. So. Shout out to Grandmaster. Shout out to my parents. I gotta pick them up from the airport tomorrow. Hey. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, and anybody that uh, wants to try classes, you know, for Taekwondo, we do two free classes. You know, if uh, I have uh, uh, students that drive from uh, Bernie, you know, so uh, I would say, you know, I'm not I'm not close by, but you can. Everybody around me is welcome to come try class and. If it inspires you to try martial arts somewhere else and join another school, you know that's that's what it's about. You know, there's not Definitely. enough martial arts I, I schools. That, man. Yeah, there's, there's not enough martial arts schools. If everybody was doing martial arts, you know, the world would be a better place. Yeah. And but we don't have the facilities for everybody to do that. So uh, everybody, get started. You know, <laughs> we do have that seminar coming up too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a women's self defense seminar. It's almost full. If anybody's oh, okay. if anybody's interested. Uh, if we get it, if we get enough, we might do another one on the twenty eighth. I'm not sure. It's up to because that's the week of the fight. So maybe another one after that. It's not like we're gotcha. trying. We're not trying to start a business of doing what women's self defense, but uh, it is available. It's yeah. uh, it's going to be an intense five hour seminar, going wow. through uh, you know situational awareness. Not a uh, fitness class. It's not a fitness not a class. women's fitness class yeah. at all. And uh, going over uh, techniques to get away, and uh, then uh, end it all with uh, simulations. No, no, so, definitely not. Yep. Yeah. So uh, two one zero taekwondo. That's you know. Gotcha. Uh, Ohana, uh, Jesse Ohana, Leon. Just you know. Yep. Absolutely. You know, go get here, House of Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, yeah. Everybody man. gets No, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, man, everybody everywhere, gets involved. I mean, there's enough schools out there, of course. If they're close by, then by all means, you know, step yeah. in and, and you know, mm -hmm. you guys start, start it that day. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, September is uh, Suicide Awareness Month. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, sponsors like uh, Hash Vegan Eats and uh, Tumbleweed Coffee here. Um, yes, thank plan you, Plan on doing some things. Oh, yeah. Uh, plan on doing some things in September, you know, uh, lost a few people to suicide, uh, actually this past uh, week, uh, lost someone I know, um, and uh, yesterday was his uh, memorial, uh, so yeah, dealing with uh, things like that through uh, this camp, uh, you know, it can be rough, but uh, you know, I know I have plenty of uh, uh, fellow uh, battle buddies from the military who, uh, you know, the decided to go that route and they they get you know sometimes prior to getting out they are afraid of what's going to happen or you know don't know of you know just just don't know anything outside the military 
and uh, I'll hear from them. You know, a lot of times, like just fear of getting out. Even just those, even guys who are actually retiring, who've done their time, it's just like I don't know what you know what to do, what's going to happen. Just uh, so what you know, just trying to find a you know working to find a way to give back. Everybody's like, you can't do this, you can't, you can't. It's like there's, you can always do something. Just put good positive vibes, energy yeah. out there, and you can help prevent things like that. You really yeah. can't, it does matter. Mm -hmm. uh, find a friend, grab a friend, hey, come on, we're gonna go do this today. Let's go to the gym, hey, shut your face, let's go. Yeah. You know, yeah. just go do some stairs. You there know? you go, there you go. Man. You see, and I, and I will say this, man, because I've always said, and I, I've told my kids growing up, you know, uh, throughout the years, you know, the opposite of exp uh, depression is expression. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always like, you know what, if you gotta sing it, you gotta dance Express it, you gotta break boards, you know, do yeah. martial arts, by all means, man, go out there and let it out, man, because I mean, no, there's people out there willing to listen, you know, and that's one of the things about the podcast. It's, it's for me, it's therapeutic. I get to meet a lot of great people along the way and, you know, just be able to talk about what's going on, uh, not just in life, but just in general, you know, and because of that, I, I, I love it. You know, it's yeah. a great uh, outlet. So, yeah, if, if anybody's listening and you want to talk about something going on, man, by all means, uh, hit me up. Hit, hit up these Reach gentlemen. out. Reach out. Yeah, you know. by all means, bro. Patty sure. Piblet, you know, made a, mm -hmm. made a statement exactly, last time man. he fought, too, you know, this isn't to bounce off this wasn't because i saw that but i was already feeling that and yeah. then when he did a, you know thank you for that and you know uh you know, a lot of great things come from you know people just standing up and stepping out you know yeah, show up and show sure. out you know close mouth don't get fed you know it's hard to save a life if you're not reaching out if you're not saying something that you know um and we all want to be superheroes and sometimes that's all it takes is just the, the power of your mouth the power of an open arm you know uh, like jujitsu is like one big hug, you know. Oh, it's yeah. hard to come out of jujitsu feeling bad. You just got hugged on by all these people, you know. It, it is what it is, you know. It's a different kind of hug. It, it <laughs> is, it is. But sometimes that is all you need, yeah. you know. Oh, so yeah. there's plenty of people who don't get any kind of touch in this world. Like to say, you know, if a baby doesn't get attention, it can die. Or just, you know. So yeah, give, true. give, give your partners the attention. Give them love. Some of us just want to get beat up, you know. <laughs> so me, that, that's me. the way. That that's the kind of love that some of us need. Just that tough love. You know, no, you see, uh, that's that's true, man. And I'm gonna say this real quick because uh, I've noticed um, a lot of times it's physical for most people. A lot of times it's emotional, it's verbal. You know, there's a lot of different ways to express, you know, yourself and, and others. You know what they're going through. But um, I realize that because when I go around, like I said earlier, I hate I hate stare, but I love them. It's kind of like one yeah. of those things where I'm done. I'm like, okay, yeah, like it it. It, it it did good for me, and I'm I'm able to go home and relax. I'm tired. I'm like, it, you know what? It spotlighted that weak yeah. whatever that weakness was on you. It spotlighted, yeah. then it pushed it out of you, and you're thankful for that. No, no, for sure, My, gentlemen. I thank you all, of course. Thank you for having us. And uh, everybody out there, of course, man. You know, go go out there. I mean, this is D uh, Spider, of course. You know, D Five Car Podcast. Till next time, follow up. Peace. It's gonna take a few seconds yes, sir, to unload, but uh, I do thank you guys, of course. Yes, man. I mean, there's a lot that's going on. Um, these fights coming up, of course.